What is the secret of your happiness? Hey, hi. Today's story is about self-reflection. The story of an aged European couple, Henry and Martha. Henry seems to be in his late 70s. Martha perhaps seems to be in her early 70s. One day morning, Henry, while having breakfast in the balcony, calls out for Martha and says, Martha, can I ask you a question? Martha says, yes, Henry, please ask me. And Henry says, what will you do if I die? And that's the time when Martha smiles and says, in fact, Henry, this question came to my mind a few days back. I wanted to ask you this question, Henry, what will you do when I die? And that's the time when both the couple get into a mode of self-realization and they have a deep conversation post which both of them decide to take their car and go to the nearest home for the agent. Henry and Martha in the afternoon takes off the car and they go to the nearest home for the agent. There, there is a manager, Richard, waiting for them, eagerly and happily and gracefully welcoming them into this particular home for the agent and says, please let me know what can I do for you. And that's the time when Henry says, hey, look, I'm one of the richest men in the town here. And I own a huge mansion in this particular city. In fact, at this point of time, I don't need a home for the agent facility. But we are here to strike a deal, a very customized deal, a deal that if I die, the rest of Martha's life, she will be here with you. And if Martha is no more, then the rest of my life, I would like to come and stay here. So it's either or if one of them is no more on this planet, the other person would like to come and spend the time here. Richard strikes a deal for them. And the check is paid instantly in euros. And Richard is told by Henry that one day we will call you and be ready. Keep our rooms ready for us whenever we call for it. 11 months and 16 days later, a call comes to Richard and this time it's Martha, quite possibly. In reality, Henry is no more. Martha's best friend is no more. The person who was the spine of her back is no more. But Martha seems to have faced the reality and has shaken hands with nature and says, it's okay, I have to traverse the rest of my life. And that's the time when Martha calls Richard and says, day after tomorrow, I will be coming there to stay with you for the rest of my life. Martha transacts off her mansion, gives up everything that she has, puts the money into the bank and she's packed the bags with a small suitcase. That's all that she has now. And she goes to this particular home for the agent. The day she reaches there, Richard, like committed before, calls her and says, Ma'am, ground floor, room number three, G3 is your room. And the room is open and it's a nice, spacious, huge room with a back door as well. Martha says, wow, this is nice. She opens the window and the rays of the sun falls into this room, which means it's an east facing room. Fair day. She opens the back door and she sees that just behind there is a pool, there is a lawn and there is a garden as well. Life is going to be beautiful here. Martha adjusts in G3 and the beauty of G3 is everything is at her convenience. The canteen is just five steps away from her room. The garden is just behind her room. Everything seems to be available and normally the oldies, they come to have a small chit chat session in the backyard. So it's easy for her to connect, network and make friends as well. Martha slowly has adjusted in G3 and it is nine months. Martha is a happy go lucky person. Everybody likes Martha. Ground floor members have formed their own group. One fine day, Richard comes and says, Martha, can I make a request to you? Martha says, yes, Richard, go ahead. Richard says, we are planning to make some renovation in this particular room, G3. Is it possible that you can shift to the upper floor, that is the first floor, for a few months? 
Martha says, what do you mean by few months? He says, five or six months. Hey, that's okay. Take six months, not five, but make this room beautiful, redecorated, renovated for me. And Henry says, and Richard says, it's a promise. Martha is ready to shift, but not today. Maybe after adjusting and, and packing off her goods here. So Richard he calls the domestic help and says, look, tomorrow morning, ma'am, will be transferring from, I mean, from this ground floor G3 to the first floor. Ensure you take her baggages to the first floor. The domestic help says, yes, sir. Next day morning, she has her breakfast. She calls the domestic help. The domestic help comes in, picks up both the bags in his hand. And he stops there and he asks Martha a question. Martha says, what happened? He says, I want to ask you a question. Do you really feel that they are going to renovate this room and make this a posh room? Because day before yesterday, I saw Richard actually talking to a guest and maybe looks like some new guests have got this particular room. Martha says, I don't know my child. All that he has told me is I have to shift to the first floor for a few months. I don't want to bother about it. Come, come, let's go. And she smiles and takes this guy towards the first floor. Halfway the first floor, he keeps the bag down. And he says, Martha, can you believe me? Every day, morning, afternoon, evening and night, you will have to go upstairs and downstairs minimum four times. That's going to be tedious for you. Martha says, why are you worried? You think I'm so old? I am a young lady. I can go up and down four, five or even six times. Don't worry about it. And they will go further. The first floor, this guy goes and keeps the two bags down and says, let me tell you, Martha, the room number is the 13th room from here, the last room on the first floor, which means every day you will have to walk this aisle and walk back minimum four times. Climbing obviously is unavoidable, but you'll have to traverse this aisle as well. Now that's going to be tedious. Martha says, I am used to walking my child. You come, let's go to the room. They slowly go to the room. F13 is the room number. First floor, the 13th room. F13 is open. And the room is not as spacious as G3, obviously. Martha opens the window, but there is no sun, sunlight coming in. And that's the time when the boy says, you had got an east-facing room. The sunlight will come only in the evening. Oh, the sunlight comes in the evening. So this is a west-facing room. Oh, that's okay. I'll take a sun bath in the evening. That's all. And, he, and she says, keep the bag here. This sounds to be a nice room. Thank you so much. The boy keeps the bag down. With a thousand questions in his mind, he walks towards the door, stops there, comes back and once again says, I want to ask you a question. And that's the time when Martha is just relaxing on the new bed. And Martha says, yes, my child, ask me your question. And that's the time when the boy asks, I told you at several occasions, that look, I don't think they are going to renovate the room. Every day you have to travel this up and down four times. Every day you have to walk through the aisle. This is not an east facing room. Each time you cut me short and you kept smiling and you said, it's okay. It's just about a few more days. What is the secret of your happiness? Martha says, that's a deep question. My child, please come here and sit with me. The child sits next to Martha and Martha says, Take this lesson from me and this can be helpful to you at this young age. Perhaps I realized this a little late in my life, but I'm practicing what I'm going to tell you now. Listen to the statement very clearly. Viewers, this is for you. Martha says, happiness is a choice I have made in my life. Irrespective of the situations in my life, I have decided to be happy. The external conditions will change. My mind will throw a lot of negativity. Somebody will pay, play pranks with me. Somebody might not. Half of them are the game of my mind. I have chosen to be happy. And happiness is an inside out event. It is not an outside in event. So perhaps the external situations might not make me happy temporarily. And that's the message to each one of you. Happiness is an intrinsic behavior which we have to develop within ourselves. Let's all 
choose to be happy and let's not give our remote of our life to external situations where they, they they press the button and sometimes they make us happy and sometimes they make us sad so this is the message to you happiness is a choice you make in your life irrespective of the situations in your life